Styling your site with global styles. Learning outcome. Change global styles to reflect your own brand. Change typography, colors, layout. Using the font library feature. How to apply a color palette change to an accent color. Change the global style of blocks. Example, a quote block. A couple of resources to think about beforehand is font pairing. A good design principle is to pick a one style of font for your heading and a different font style for your text. Here's an article from Google Fonts. Another resource is the Font Pair website, F-O-N-T-P-A-I-R. Within their pairings tab, they've paired together fonts that work well Color palettes is another thing to think about before designing. Here are two resources that have uh, free access. Coolers has a trending color palette, which will give you the hex code number, uh, which is always good to jot down so that you have those colors. Canva also has a color palette that's free. We're going to go to our dashboard now, and we'll look at our side toolbar on the left. Go down to Appearance and over to Editor and click on that. We'll go in under Design and go to Styles. Click on that. And within the style, Styles menu, you will see an I icon, which is the style book, and we'll talk about that in a later lesson and the pen pencil icon which when I hover over says edit style so we'll click on that. We're going to look at browse styles now. I opened up my right menu. At the upper right hand corner is a half moon and I hover over and that that says styles. So I'm going to go down to Browse Styles. The 2024 theme comes with eight variations. The variations include different color and font combinations. When I click on one of the variations, I can see it instantly. How the different blocks will look on my site. I'm going to stick with the, the default theme and We'll look at ch maybe changing a couple of the colors to um, better represent my color palette. Then go back out to the style section. Typography. So we're going to look at our typography section. This section manages the settings for font families, size, appearance, from text, two links, two buttons. A good rule of design is to have, like I said before, one font family for headings and a different but compatible font family for the text. A new feature is our presets. We can look at the different font combinations. And if we wanted to change those, even though I'm in the default uh, theme, I can still change the fonts how I would like. The fonts uh, that come with the theme are listed here. And you see that I have um, different combinations, variants. So that means I have two var variations of this one and two variations of this one. A new feature is to manage your fonts. And if you hover over this icon, I'm going to open up the font library. So the theme fonts are listed, like I said. I also have the option to upload or install fonts. So let's look at install fonts first. And we're going to connect to Google Fonts. So we need to allow access to, our, to the Google Fonts. And we can scroll through 
and there are 319 pages as of this recording. So there's a lot to choose from. So I had done a little bit of research, and so I know that I like this one particular Open Sans. So I'm going to click on that. Now the Open Sans I'm going to use for my uh, main text. So I don't need all of these. Um, and so I'm planning ahead that I need a at least a normal, and I like it a little bit um, darker than the, the uh, 300 normal. So I'm going to pick the 400. I'd like to be able to make some words uh, a little bit bold. So I'm gonna pick the 700. I'm also gonna pick an italic, uh, again, the 400 and a bold with that. So I have four of those. So I'm gonna hit click install button at the bottom. And if I scroll back up, it says that it was successful. So when I go back to the library tab, I see that install fonts, I have my font there and I have the four variants active. The other way to upload is to upload. So I'm going to click on upload. And just to remember that upload fonts appear and can be used. It needs to be support. You need to use a supportive format of a TFF, OTF, WOFF, or a WOFF2 um, format. So in the middle is the word upload font. I'm going to click on that. And I've already have a folder of a font that I like. I'm going to open that font. And again, I don't need all of them, but this is going to be the font for my um, headings. So I definitely want to have um, a regular. And um, I don't need any light. Um, I'm definitely would like a bold because my headings I'd like to make bold. So I think I'm going to just stick with that because I don't want to do any italic headings and stuff like that. Um, so again, planning ahead of time is beneficial for these steps. So the font was successful. I'm going to go back to my library and I see that that font is available now. So I can close this up and if I look over on my right menu, I see that I have those two options available for me too. The other section down here is the um, elements. So I can go in and on a global level, change all of my text. So now that I've added these two new fonts, I'm gonna go into text and I wanna change it to the open sans, okay? And then I want to uh, keep it regular, okay? So we're good with that. We're going to click Save, and it's going to save that. And I'm going to click back out and go into my headings. And so now the headings have different. So I could do all of my headings the same font family, OK? Um, but remember that we have one H1 per page. And then we have to do our structural formatting of then the next one would be an H2. And then we would go into H3s and so on. So you see that there are different sizes of the font. So I probably want to kind of go through and um, style each of the font. I double check the sizing of that. If the default sizing isn't what I would like, if I would like maybe the H3s to be a little bit um, bigger font, I can do that here. So let's look at this. We want to um, change our font family to the um, Bolada. And I want to make it the bold, okay? And I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than extra large because the font family is on the smaller side. So I'm gonna click on this. We're using REMS. Uh, REM is just an easier to, when you when it goes down to mobile, that its size is uh, a little bit better. So let's go to um, a 4, 3.5. And so you can see the difference up in this little window at the top. I'm not seeing any change over here. 
it might be just a little bug within there. So I'm going to click on that and save it and save again. And then I can go to, like I said, the H2 is okay. And we can go to the all. And I'm going to make sure that. Oh, no. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's just <laughs> see. You can always change your design in the middle, right? Um, the H2, I'm going to um, keep in the bolada. And I like that size, so I'm going to save that. Let me go back because I don't want all the font to be, because I just realized that I wouldn't want the H3s to be the fancier font. So the H3s, we're gonna just make as the open sands, but I do wanna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And let's just look at our front end to see what happens there. So we've changed that to the bold, that too, and that is staying. So things to play with on that. So I'm going to click back out of typography. The next section is colors. So our color section takes care of kind of fine tuning our color palette that we've picked. So remember that I picked the default and the default palette has 10 colors. Now, if I've gotten this far and I might want to change to one of the other ones or just at least see how it is, I do have access to it right above. Um, so if I click on the 10 colors of the color palette, um, we have the palette, we have our solid, and we have our gradient. I'm going to focus just more on the solid right now. Um, and like I said, I there was one color, this orange, that I probably will not use, but I did want to kind of change that. So I can go into themes and the three dots over here, uh, click and say show details, okay? So the close-up is going to show uh, after I've changed the color. So the reset colors will appear in that. As of right now, where I'm at on here, it just shows the show details. So I'm going to click on show details. And what's nice is that it shows the names of the different colors. And so I want to focus in on accent number three. So if I click on that, I can go ahead and change the color. I'm going to change it to more of a uh, bright red, uh, a deeper red. Okay, so I found that. I'm happy with that. It's changed. And then I have to make sure I hit done and then hit save. Okay, so I'm doing the color setting. Uh, it's nice to kind of just double check to make sure what you have changed. Uh, so don't just keep clicking. <laughs> All right, so I can also add a custom color if I wanted to add more colors within here. So now that we go back out to, from our palette, we go back to our colors menu. The section down below is our colors. Okay, so we have, we can pick our basic text background heading. We could also do the H1s and stuff too. Okay, uh, so what we want to do is the button. Um, so I'd like to change that one up and have it as a universal color. So if I click on the button colors, I have the option for the text in the background and gradient. So let's look at the, the text. So right now it's white and I know that we're gonna kind of keep that so then look at our background and we're gonna change that to red. Okay, so now we're good with that. So then we make sure we hit save up here and that will change the global styles of the button and the color setting. So then whenever I add a button, it will be that those two colors. All right, we're gonna go back out. If 
Our next section is layout. All right, so we go down to layout. And the layout section styles the main content area and uh, gives the content and the wide in pixels. Okay, so that is from your left to all the way to your right. These are the default settings. So you see that there is some padding already part of it. And if you take a look up here in the heading and I move this, you can see how that changes. Okay. We also have a block spacing uh, default that's already set there too. So I'm going to click back out of layout. Blocks is our next section. And we'll go down here to blocks. And this menu opens up all of our blocks that are within this theme. And we can go in and we can customize the appearance of specific blocks and for the whole site. So that means that if you want all your heading blocks to have a certain background color, you could do that, okay? You don't want to get too um, involved with doing each of these separately because remember we have our initial global styles up here that we've already changed. And if you start changing every little block, then it gets really confusing uh, when you need to do uh, change something, you don't know where you changed it. So uh, it's always good to start in the global styles. And then if there's a particular block that you really want to kind of uh, change, then you could do that. So I'm gonna just give an example of the qu quote block, cause that's kind of like a, a specialty block that you might want to do a different kind of font. So let's scroll down here to my example. So we have the quote block, I've added a group and the quote block has a paragraph within it, and then it has its area for a citation, which is the author's name. So if I want to uh, change the font of this, okay, I can go to uh, typography and go down to font. And remember that I have my open sans as my overall font, and I can either do it as regular, or I can do it as italic and things like that. And I can always change the, um, the size of it too if I just want it small, large, and click on save for that. So that would be an example. I just touched on the basics of how to style your site with global styles. Go explore on your site and check out more lessons.